roll for good measure? I'm gonna bump it. No, we don't get one. Oh. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not real happy to admit it. The fucking greatest name in rock and roll ever. I, 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 and I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of saying it, but God damn it. You can't, it's hard to deny it. I mean, you start looking at all the various, cause we've done this before as a question, you know, what are the greatest guitar players that a lead singers ever played with hands down this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you start looking up and down the roster of guitar players. He's played with bass players. He's played with fucking drummers. He's played with Ozzy has never played with a shitty act. That's really true. His, I, I don't know. Maybe this uh, lineup on the current, uh, album that he has out, I think it's full of fucking nobodies. Maybe. But I mean, but wasn't that this? I mean, shit, nobody knew who Mike Inez was. Nobody knew, you know, f- when you start fucking Jakey Lee. I mean, Zach, well, nobody knew any of these assholes. Yeah. Bro. Did Jakey Lee go on to do anything else? Post? <laughs> well, uh, kind of. Yeah. He's, he, uh, during the pandemic, he showed up on a lot of videos. <laughs> you know, the songwriter, uh, comp, you know, oh, conspiracy or compilations oh, or whatever. Oh, no. That's a bummer. Yeah, who fucking cared? But didn't he? Didn't he have his own? Didn't he do his own shit? Or, I, I, think, I think he had like the Jake E. Lee band. Either that, or else I am getting him fucking confused with old Mister Black Label Society. Yeah, it's, Zach Wilde went on to do. Uh, they're real easy to get transposed. <laughs> Very true. Very fucking true. However, you know it's Zach. Wilde. you can tell you're listening to Zach Wilde, right? When you hear the little false harmonics, because that's that's his forte, bro. Right. That is a, it's just a plucking technique is really all that is. Yeah. It's, it's not that hard. Matter of fact, I accidentally do it way more than I want to. Oh, okay. So the, the last Ozzy album didn't really have what you call a band. Just had a whole bunch of people. Okay. Uh, let's see. Andrew Watt, who is, who the fuck are you, sir? What? Also known simply as Watt, I, I, you don't matter to me. Don't know who you are. Louis Bell. Louis uh, Black, but he'd be there to yell. Selena yeah. Gomez is his biggest uh, claim to fame. Oh, he's only on one track, so that's oh, fine. Oh, he's bedded Selena. Right. Uh, Duff McKagan. All right. Okay, Another, there you go. There, okay, there. GNR? W- would you, well, I wouldn't call him a bad one, but would you call Duff McKagan in the higher pantheon of bass players? Duff McKagan would love it if we said that. Yeah. Well, we know he listens on the ridge. <laughs> what up, Duff? Um. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, he's a name. He's a fucking name, man. Yeah. You know, it's funny now that I'm. But the thing is, there's no Chad Smith on drums. Yeah. I'll, I'll give. Oh, that. that's that's great solid. drummer. Great yeah. drummer, and he's on every song. So that's a band member. That's a member of the well, band you, and show. You realize though, when it comes to like you know mastering and shit like that, when you're really putting it all together. Well, actually, even before that, when you're actually just in studio. Man, you switch up drummers, it's fucking obvious as night and day. It's really noticeable, isn't it? Very much so. Yeah. So that's that's a mark of consistency. Always have the same cat on drums. Yeah. Know. Elton John on track four. Hey, there you Ooh. go. Uh, Post Malone, that guy. As much as I don't like that jackass, I'll, I'll come around, I'm sure. But I, but I recognize that he is kind of, if you're talking about fucking 2021 rock, he's your boy. Yeah. I guess. I mean, I'm, thankfully, I don't really talk a lot about 2021 rock. Right. I get I get to be that guy who goes, hey, you remember when? Remember that one song by that one band? Remember Living Color, Cult of Personality? You remember those motherfuckers? Man, you start bringing that shit up. People under under 35 look at you funny. I love that look. I <laughs> fucking love that look. Well, how's your week been, bruh? Uh, Normally, you ask me that question, but I thought I'd hit you with it first. Actually, I can't. I can't complain. It's all coming together now. I'd had a, <laughs> it's I'd all had a, coming together. Had to send off a piece of gear to get it fucking repaired. It came in today, and you never know. I plugged it in, and the goddamn thing works perfectly. As a matter of fact, weird? it work. It works better than it did. It's so weird, right? Like yeah. when you go so long with something working like shit, right? So you, you know, you get a brand new one out of the box, and still be like, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, that's where a refurb's kind of got it, because at least at one point in time, that motherfucker did work correctly, you know? Right. It was fine. Um, weird shit looking back. Two years ago this week, you and I were drinking fucking Mickey's out in the yard. <laughs> like, As we do. Just days before that huge goddamn 
you know, we had a, a fire rage out here. It wasn't the, not to be confused. What, what was it? It was, it was the one, yeah, within a week, a week later. And then, I mean, I had to get, I had to get evacuated. Well, actually right. I already, I evacuated myself and I tried to come home and they said no. <laughs> so, but I'm a goddamn American. Yeah. Uh, that was two years ago. One year ago tomorrow is when the uh, ESPM3 got delivered. Did you say ESPN3? M3. Oh, I think it's an M3. It's like, you got a sports channel delivered this year? <laughs> well, it's an ESP with a three pickup setup with the M style body. and Yeah, yeah. I heard N, <laughs> not M. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you said M. But yeah, no, that was, uh, that was one year ago ah, tomorrow. Dude. I remember that day well. So, in light of that, I think what you do every time the anniversary of a guitar comes up, and if you use active pickups, you change the battery. It's a good call. So It's a good call. And on top of that, I was cutting a little. It, it seemed like my gain wasn't quite there where it usually is. I went, well, I play this a lot. <laughs> it's been a year. Let's change that shit up. If I was actually playing a regular gig again, I would probably change that shit about every three or four months. That's still pretty good. You don't want to be on stage and have that fucking thing die on you. No, it's just like being on the road in your vehicle. All of a sudden, you have no power. Well, it's better in the fact that if you've got a battery around, it doesn't take much to change it out. I mean, all you got to have is a front man that can bullshit for a little bit, you know. Oh, you need. And yeah. usually, your front man better already have that ability. Better, it be, you better not be dealing with some goth motherfucker, you know, some emo cat. Yeah. That yeah, is, fuck that. That looking appreciates like a, silence. Looking like a Canadian Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> with with all the enthusiasm of a mongoloid with a calculator, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh yeah, no, we're starting two hundred one off proper. That's, That's right. The, yeah. yeah, I don't know if there's going to be a two hundred two after that one. <laughs> My, uh, not a lot to complain about either. Um, I did have an incident at work about a week and a half ago. Oh, my first incident. Now, when I was working at the hotel and I would say incident, you knew exactly what I was talking Cops about. are getting called. Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, not that. It was a singular moment. So I, uh, I was lobby bitch. So I was doing drive through orders, checking people in. I was going, dude. I don't know why, but that seems like that's the heavier lifting of the job out of the whole fucking building. No, because in the back, you got to answer that phone first. Oh, really? And that phone will not stop. Oh, okay. Everybody wants I thought the person up front had to do the phone. No, but. if it rings, rings enough, then it's on lobby people. Because clearly, if you know that we're busy, it's on you. Yeah. But uh, more times than not, the lop, like, a fuck, drive through rush at that place, dude? Boo. It will, it will fuck you up. And it nearly got me. <clears throat> Here's why. So I'm, uh, I was cleaning the window outside on the drive thru, and I had to bring a little stool out, same stool that we stand on when we're at the drive thru because the window's a little on the high side. And I wrap it up and I go inside and I'm doing, doing something else, and someone comes in the drive thru. It's been a while. And I go, I'm like, ah, shit, where's my, where my stool? I need my stool or I can't reach. I look short, look dumb. So I go outside. I had left the stool outside. So I go outside and I grab the, uh, the, the lady's stuff. And I'm like, hey, I forgot this. And I go to turn around. We have this fucking flower pot. That's probably the size, well, it was. Oh, and the, uh, you're using this in the past tense. Now. Yeah, the size, like a bucket, like a five-gallon bucket. It's pretty good made, size. Made of clay, whatever they make those cocksucking things out of. Terracotta, yeah. Cool. Filled with cigarette butts and potting soil. And I just plow through it like it ain't even there, like I'm fucking Godzilla. Just boom, shin first into this thing. Shattered the shit out of it. Your shin? Uh, the the, the, oh, the, okay. the, right. the pot. Well, it oh, fucking, so you didn't you didn't like pull like an Anderson Silva on the thing. The, right? I'm shocked. I think it's just because I I walked right through it. Like I just if I had probably stopped my m motion, I probably would have just fucked up my shit. But since I was just going full clip because I was like in work mode, I'm not. So you used how you how you defeat Justin Gaethje and just walked right through it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And if uh, Anderson Silva tries to leg kick me and I check it, that leg's getting broke again, dude. There you go. I don't think you got to worry about that too much, but but here was the thing. So of course, and like the walking path there is maybe four feet wide. No, you're you're, you're being too gentle. It's about <laughs> it's about two two and a half feet. For, for for a man like me, it feels small. So there was one of two things that could have happened. The first 
was I just do a face plant, get a gut full of terracotta and a face full of cement. That'd been a bad day. Yeah. Workman's comp probably had been pretty dope. Yeah. Been but a, uh, it'd, it'd been, been a bad day. You'd been laid up and getting paid, but yeah. who fucking wants that? Yeah. You know. And I, yeah, and it would have fucking sucked. Especially or, if you have a job you like. <laughs> you don't want to be fucking <laughs> exactly. taking, have to have to get sent home I, from some shit you dig. I tend to enjoy myself out there. The other option, which is thankfully the option I chose, was as I'm falling, I just we have these uh, little or yellow fucking things that people try to vault over Walmart and get crotched on. Which, by the way, and they're not small, but yeah. Well, yeah, they're about five feet tall. I uh, I rubbed a tire on one the other day. <laughs> Those things are lifesavers for both animate and inanimate objects. Yeah. So I basically just threw my arm out. I wasn't going to be able to grab it because it was too close to me. So I had to hook my my arm around it and like get it in the nook of my shoulder elbow, and I just spun around and I'm staring right at the person in the car. You had to show me the video yeah. last week, and um, as I limp all, the fuck over here, all the rest of you have to do. You've all been to strip clubs, right? Brandon looked like the girl on the pole. I it was very. I don't know. I get lucky sometimes with uh, things like this, like. When I was drinking at someone's house and I was elevated about a foot on a porch, stepped down into a hole that was about two feet deep, so about a, th- about a yard drop that I didn't know about, foot went right in. I just stepped in. I was like, whoa. So one of those makes your uh, makes your taint clench up like a fist? I wasn't uh, right as soon as when I knew my foot should have hit terra firma. It didn't. That's where the butthole came That's in. That's right, man. Yeah. But I was able to step directly into it, pirouette, and step the fuck out. Where any other day, I'm probably breaking my leg in that motherfucker. So you have a tendency of uh, looking like you meant to do yeah, shit. All I right. think so. I stepped in that water meter hole, and all I got was a sore balls and a tore pair of pants. Hmm. It's a pretty good day. I'm just like a lucky klutz. Yeah. Well, I can't go into detail because mine involves, uh, from last week, uh, involves potentially a crime. Um, but I will say this is that. <laughs> I, I, dude, I got to admit, I kind of forgot. <laughs> I would love it if I could. I would love it if I could. All that, all that needs to be said is if you reach my age, you shouldn't, you, you should never have to throw a punch. Wear a mask, people. Wear a That's mask and be said. safe. Get your shots. Get you know. And don't be a fucking asshole. Don't be an asshole, especially the ladies. Hello. Yeah. No. It, chivalry got me fucking in trouble again, as it does, as it does. But uh, see, without actually actively saying anything, I feel like we've described what happened. Yeah. I'll, I'm good with it. You yeah. Know, but. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, you, you. Actually, you know, realistically. <clears throat> If you can work things out with people without shit getting fucking too wacky and going to blows, that's the way to do it. I sure. don't give a fuck who you are. Use, use your uh, use your dry fucking wit. But uh, but if you're a little if you've been a little angry lately and you encounter another angry person and it kind of get, gets to where that's the case, walking away is actually a really good thing to do too. Always an option. Because uh, let's just say that if you if you still think that you've uh, got the gas. Uh, your body's going to let you know for like, I don't know, like a week and a half uh, how wrong you are. So, legally speaking, how long can we wait until we tell this story? Actually, probably now. And I mean, I, that's, no, no, we got to let it fester. Yeah, it's. Gotta let it let it rise. Yeah, so I don't. Good I, dough. I, I don't know that it's actually ever going to be told in its entirety. But uh, so that means you're going to have to come out to the meat hall, folks. Yeah. Yeah, come over and ply me with liquor. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll set you up. But. <laughs> I'll tell you your fortune, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Read your goddamn tarot cards. I don't give a shit. I mean, whatever you got. want to hear tales, I've got those. But, um, but suffice it to be said is that, uh, that chivalry is alive and well, and, uh, and so is old dudes fucking lighting up young dudes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a good time to be alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess, but it's uh, – it's, it's, if you don't do shit, look, if I worked out all the time, if I was on a heavy bag every day, I wouldn't have any issue. That shit stuck with me fucking even t- even now, occasionally, if I move my shoulder the wrong way. It's like feels like lightning in there. Wow. Well. But, but that's a good thing, though, that striking coaches will tell you, if your shoulder hurts, you did something right. 
<laughs> unless you pulled it out. I mean, unless you yeah. fucking did something stupid. But yeah. But, but if I mean, your but, wrist hurts, you did it wrong. Oh well, yeah. But I mean, but if you get wrist, elbow, and shoulder, you did something right. You did something right. Everything connected. Need a beer? Always, every day of my life. So I don't normally bring up like podcast business on here, but I, I was uh, after doing the 200th episode of this cocksucker. I kind of enjoyed throwing in some uh, some like clips, you know. Yeah, well, that was fun. That was good. So I'm thinking that uh, maybe starting on the next one because I'm not prepared. Actually, I, I got to admit, I just thought of this five minutes ago while mentally masturbating to my work on the last one. I'm uh, thinking about doing a little bit of a like a, a little flashback kind of thing. I think actually that's the way we should start every podcast. You think so? I think every podcast hey. we should start with a clip from the last show. So then when we get to like, I don't know, some other fucking milestone like 250, which is not far down the road, or 500, then it's oh easy. You can just go and grab that shit because they're at the fucking beginning of every one of them. Very true. Very true. I'm not saying that, uh, that you know, I'm, I'm up for being that lazy. But <laughs> if, we're being, if we're being real, I'm up for being that lazy. I'm always up for being so, all right, so that, that'll be something cool to look forward to because I really do enjoy. I really did enjoy doing that, you know? Yeah. That was a yeah, lot you, of fun. I got to say, for somebody that's not in the production business, you fucking nailed it. That episode 200, everybody I know that listened to it, all three or four of you, uh, had really, really great fucking reviews of the uh, production value of that. Matter of fact, I'd even turned it on to some people in the industry I work in, and they went, holy shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fuck. Well, Hey. So if this whole uh, rodeo clown thing doesn't take off for you, you got some other backup work. That'd be all right. However, I do enjoy being a rodeo clown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's, uh, we're going to get to the mead, metal, and MMA portions for the week, but I do feel... Let's go ahead and throw it to it. We didn't have LJ last week. No, I, we didn't. I, I, I kind of missed the man. Do you think we should let him open the actual show? Uh... Because I feel like the Mead Metal MMA portion starts right now. So I believe like I believe you're starts. right. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get the uh, let's get the uh, metal update for the week. We'll go ahead and get the uh, lowdown of what's going on in metal going on down what round town downtown downtown brown town no downtown parking the beef bus in Turd Town. It is the lowdown with LJ. Welcome back to the metal portion of the Mead Metal and MMA podcast. This is LJ, and I am here to deliver your daily dose of metal. Episode 201 on deck, y'all. Check this out. I got a list for you guys of some uh, music you gotta check out. First off on this list, Agent Steel. The album is called No Other Gods Before Me, with a Z on God's. Uh, this is weird because it sounds like the band was trying to be thrash metal, and they sort of are, but it's so weird to hear the dude sing, because the songs I was able to hear, the guy sings in a falsetto and then switches over to a normal voice. It's really disorienting. It's not bad, but I think they really need to figure out what they're doing with their vocals. I think the song was trying to be, like, comedic. I could not tell, because I wasn't entertained. But it's still kind of good, so uh, I guess check them out, see if you like them. Hey, speaking of not getting entertained, guess what's next on the list? Believe it or not, it's Black Metal. The band is called Foth, F-U-A-T-H. The album is called Two. Literally, it's Two Roman Numeral Eyes. And I was all like, oh, this is going to be pretty rad, you know? I, I guess it could be a little bit more hyped and stuff. It's a blast beat through the entire first song. It's... You know what? Black metal is starting to become literally mumble rap. Their version of it. It's just kind of pointless. But whatever floats your boat and gets your blood pumping, I guess. Maybe I should be less negative. Or maybe we should just make less shitty music. Moving on. We've got some uh, Greatest Hits stuff coming out. Papa Roach, Greatest Hits Volume 2. The Better Noise Years from the label Better Noise. Which I guess is whenever they release the new uh, projects under a new label. So check that out. You know what Papa Roach is all about. Papa Roach is pretty fucking legit. So now we're going to talk about two artists from two very well-known bands making albums by themselves. So now we've got Paul Stanley's Soul Station with the album Now and Then. Paul Stanley, of course, is from Kiss. And then we've got Serge Tankian, uh, System of a Down. The album is called Elasticity EP. That has got to be some cool shit. I'm only able to pick up little pieces of them. 
And they sound exactly how you think they would sound. So, yeah, go check them out. So, uh, now I'm going to do something I haven't done before, and that is give you guys some of the news that's on Loudwire because I'm too lazy to Google it. So, first off, it looks like, um, let's see, uh, Kenny Wayne Shepard's Blues Award has been, the nomination has been revoked because he was using the Confederate flag on his gear, which is a no-no. Come on, man, you know better than that. Uh, Ex-Under Oath guitarist Corey Steger has died in a car accident. That is tragic, and it sucks. On uh, other notes, Flaw Frontman uses the N-word on stage. Yikes. On happier notes, Shakira uh, is a Metallica fan. She posted a put herself of herself on Twitter, I think, uh, where she painted her nails listening to the Black Album. I mean... It's still Metallica, so it's a start. It was nothing else matters. So, anyway, that's pretty cool. And finally, Charlie Bonade, uh from Anthrax, a drummer, is uh, going to have quarantine jams on his album Silver Linings. Pretty cool. That's all I got for this week. You guys take care. Stay safe. I apologize for the technical difficulties. My computer is ass. So, we'll see you guys next week. Until next time, see ya. Rock the fuck out. Hey, God damn it. Well, it feels like we're back to normal again. It does. <laughs> uh, yeah, LJ brings the stability the show so badly needs. So We do tend to go off the rails sometimes. <laughs> against our own best interests many yeah, times. Yeah, so. but usually to the benefit of others. But good shit, LJ. Keep it up, man. Um, man, I got to – let's get into the updates. For the, the Mead update is an interesting one in that – you know, remember back once upon a time, we'd turn around a batch of meat in like 30 days. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was actually kind of the industry standard for us at the time. And that became uh, two months, which later then became like six months. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes longer. Well, the uh, so I'd started a uh, just a vanilla batch, just a regular old batch one. Uh, it started that, oh, yeah, what are we talking about now, three weeks ago? This is tomorrow, Sunday would be three weeks ago. Yeah, that yeah. sounds right. And uh, I'm still thinking, I'm still looking at it. I'm still seeing the bubbler going. I'm thinking, let's, let's go another week, you know, and see what happens. At the end of that week, then the debate becomes this. Do we move that shit over to a carboy to age another month, as we've been doing at a minimum, or, or longer? Longer has been the, the, the That case. has been the no or the norm. Technically, we could fucking rack it straight, in which case it'd be a really young alcohol in that oak barrel. Is there? Is it ready for that, though? I don't think so. I think, yeah, because, well, one, Ruben hadn't been out as much <laughs> lately. <laughs> Ruben does, he puts away the mead, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, to be completely honest, when it starts to warm up, I kind of not step away from mead, but it's not my go-to either. Right. Uh I mean, hell. Well, I would say that thing's still at least half full. So what we can do then is to go ahead and move it over into a uh, into a five gallon carboy, and uh, and just let it age until we need it. That's good to have one in the chamber, you know. Yeah, pretty much. That's kind of that equivalent. Yeah, almost makes me want to get another oak barrel for long term aging. Ah, so this one wouldn't have to be fancy. No, no, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't get our logo and shit put yeah. on it. Just a standard barrel, yeah. Hmm. Get all of uh, any of the Coopers out there I know or whatever. Yeah, Cooper Smiths. Do we know anyone that owns a Cooperage? <laughs> Does anybody right. know what that fucking means anymore <laughs> yeah, outside down, the people at the table? Down the road uh, next to the harness maker. <laughs> in the Wainwright. Right in between the Smithies. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be all right. Well, and then we could actually start aging batches a full year without any kind of issue at all, and it would automatically be oaked. And it yeah. would automatic. Yeah, I mean, basically, that'd be the long ships central. Yeah. I'd still love to see how a troublemaker batch in an oak barrel would turn out. Ooh. Ooh. Now, with all the spice in that, do you think that one would tend to linger more than Green Man? Yes. With it just being... Yeah, but we would label that as the uh, as the aging process for Troublemaker. For the long ships? The long the long maker? The long maker? The, tr- the, the <laughs> trouble ships? <laughs> the, I want to drink me a glass of green trouble ships. <laughs> it's not like Pringles, guys. You can't mix and match this shit. Nope. 
It don't work out that way. But anyway, but that was a thought. You know, and barrels, if you don't do anything too fancy, they're not they're not overly expensive. But there's a place down in South Texas, and they make them all by hand. They're, they made that one by hand. And you can tell. You can look at it. That's it's good, a, though. It is I, a rustic-looking bitch. Yeah. It looks like something that was built more for use than for looks. Yeah. Yeah, and if it hadn't been for the pandemic, you know, that – because that was about around one year ago that I ordered that shit and, uh, and came in sometime, I think, because you order them and then they start building. They don't build them beforehand. They build them when you order it. And uh, got it somewhere after my birthday, so second half of April. And then that's when I started curing it. And then notice is like, oh, this fucking thing ain't going to cure right. So then that's when I ended up having to get that, you know, uh, end up getting basically a synthetic that whale, fucking whale, whale fat. You know. Oh, it was whale fat. Sorry. Sorry, I remembered it wrong. Yeah. And uh, had to order that shit in from, uh, or actually not even synthetic. That, sh- that was a real deal. That was, I was yeah, going to yeah. say, that was legit. Yeah, there was a synthetic I could have got that was made here in America. But as we always do, we try to stay as close to the uh, the tradition as we can. And even in the midst of a pandemic and trying to get shit in from other countries to so this country was almost fucking impossible. Two months later, and we did get that fucking shipment that came in from Norway. But it was two months. Well, we like, like I said, we like to keep it legit. We like to party. I wouldn't put synthetic whale blubber on my balls, let me tell you that. Yeah, so it was, uh, that blubber was not fucking cheap. It was like 25 goddamn dollars for this little vial of that shit. We use the rest to make it oblate with. Use, uh, use the rest for a sexy time, you know, with the ladies when they come. No, let's see. They do say <laughs> to avoid oil-based lubricants, and now we know why. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but anyway, but that's the update for the week is we do have a batch going there. Having said that, once we move that to a carboy, I would love to start another batch of what? I don't know, but I wouldn't mind. It wouldn't break my heart to get a little fucking creative this year, whether we try a piment batch, whether we try a mulberry batch, whatever the case might be. I think it's been a long time since we've done something new. Yeah. So which is okay because I mean, when people dig what you're doing, Keep doing what you're doing, white yeah, boy. Generally, you know, but I, but I wouldn't mind getting a little experimental with some shit this year. Sure. Yeah, it's been a while, man. Got to get that brain back to work. The evil, the evil mad scientist boy. Yeah. I mean, which almost always inevitably then leads me also back to, well, fuck, is it about time to do a coffee batch? I'm not opposed to it, but I'd rather do that shit in a one gallon. Smaller uh, yield test run. Yeah. Yeah, because the the coffee based mead that I've had before is definitely it's it's an acquired thing. <laughs> coffee is really starting to interject itself into a lot of shit. Into everything, but it's the current. It's the it's the pretty girl at the prom right now. Coffee, like the the Coca Cola coffee, is fucking disgusting. Yeah, I fucking there ain't, I I hate to be that guy, but if it's got Coca Cola on the label, I just don't buy it. Even ah. all the way even all the way down to Dasani now, I don't even buy that. So wow. Kicking even the bottled water they provide. I, I don't drink bottled water. You do. I mean, That's true. Uh, I don't drink soda. I mean, there's yeah. ever, it's pretty goddamn rare if I do. Usually if I do, it's because I have a, decided to have a moment of weakness and go through a fast food place. And it's like, oh, it comes with a drink? Uh, what do you go for? I think you, I think usually Dr. Pepper or root beer. But Doc, I mean, but yeah. it, but I, I, I'll have like a, a couple pulls off it and it goes down the drain. Yeah. I, uh, if I ever have a soda craving, I just go get one rather than having them on standby. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I don't even get that. So I, I, I don't, I don't know. And this is, this come from a dude that used to slam them down. I, I worked uh, as a child. I uh, was a teenager. <laughs> you were I, a child worker, huh? Worked for my, uh, brother-in-law back in Illinois. Ch- you know, I, I was the tire guy. So I'd fix all the flats that'd come in and shit like that. Get semis coming with split rim tires. Woo. That's where the money was at. But. But I mean, but a standard car tire would get me three fifty. Now this is back a long time ago. But three and a half bucks would be my cut, and the uh, soda machine out front, I think it was like thirty five, forty cents for a soda. Well, fuck, I'd go out, and this is in the Midwest, so I'd go out, I'd go through hell eight or nine, ten cans of Mellow Yellow a day. Motherfucker, Mellow a Yellow, day. nice choice. Yeah. Well, that's kind of a nice Midwestern beverage, yeah. right? you know. Yeah, they ain't nothing wrong with Mel Yelp. Makes a nice uh, uh, NASCAR car. Move out to the southwest, and it's like, oh, we don't have that out here. But we do have Squirt. Squirt's what the ladies do. It's not a soft ah. drink. And that is, uh, that's pee. That is, that, that's that's Mellow Yellow that's coming urine. out. That's the, 
<laughs> Squirts the process. <laughs> Mellow yellow is the result. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your soda pops, ladies. Uh, throw them back. All right, uh, metal side, sir. What do we got going on this week, sir? Corey Taylor has a concert in Lubbock next uh, in May. Next in May. Next in May. Next to be in May. Uh, good luck if you want to go, because of course them shits are sold out. Oh, I'm sure. Because I because it's at the uh, the amphitheater, so not only is it going to be outdoors, they're still. Doing like, well, we'll sell this many tickets. You'll have this circle you get to stand in, like it's a fucking prison camp. He's a circle jerk. Oh, God, man, I don't get it. I mean, it's it's cool to see this shit popping off once more, but it's like I'm not going to go to Vegas if there has to be fucking plastic dividers between me and some random, right? You know, yeah, I just can't do it. That one we can kind of wait on a little bit. Maybe we'll oh, know by. We and I might didn't want to go to a Corey Taylor concert to begin with. No, fuck I'm talking. That. I'm talking about Vegas. <laughs> fuck, oh, yeah, fuck Vegas, Corey no. Taylor's concert. But um, yeah, we'll start knowing if things are kind of getting a little back to normal. I think in the next few months. Uh, did we mention on the last one that we're going to the Deftones, right? Oh, I think we have mentioned it more than once. Okay, well, rubbing your nose in it again. So that's got to be in Bitches. September. So I'm just hoping that what I'm seeing now. I, I hope that that's not a harbinger of things to come, because even Walmart now in this town is not requiring masks. So, yeah, dude, it's uh everything's starting to get a little loosey goosey, eh? All these uh, dickweeds are acting like, uh, hey, we're out of it, we're out, we're out, we're on the other side now. Well, until we start getting a fucking surge in cases, and then and then this fucking governor, we fucking seen her do it, will fucking shut us down. And then all these assholes will go, yeah, it's the governor's fault. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not your fault for walking around not, you know, not, not observing the goddamn mandates. I'm not saying wear a mask for the rest of your life, you cocksuckers, but I am saying maybe if you tried a few more months and we get our case load down to where we have the odd one case here and there instead yeah. of multiples. Because we're in a rural area and we're still getting multiples a day, generally. We have had two days in a row of none. But Today was zero? Yeah, today was zero. Fucking but, eight. Which means we have had nine over, the, uh, over a 10-day reporting window, which should keep us in the green. And if it does, then that means then two weeks after that, then we're in the turquoise. Oh, okay. It has to be consecutive. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Two periods of green. So Two um, green periods. All right. Which, which the thing is, and turquoise isn't even back to normal, but... Yeah, but this, at least bars can open at that point. This is our state's wacky fucking, you know, it, 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 like the, our governor grabs like a box of crayons and they, well, it's kind of like New Mexico. Because I don't know what you do after that. What, silver? You go to Navajo silver? It is better than green plus turquoise is. Yeah. Turqu- but turquoise is also a little, little, I don't know. It just doesn't hit me right. On a map, it looks like dog shit compared to green because it's hard to discern the no, two. No, they finally chi- fixed they? that. They, they, they finally fixed that, Assholes, man. yeah. Because that was true. I was like, what, what, are, what is this? Huh? So, I mean, it's all well and good. The thing is, temperatures are warming up. People don't want to wear a mask. I get it. You know, all these patriots, right? You yeah, know, good. I don't want to uh, wear pants either, but I'm wearing pants. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, a, I could be a little handsy around your uh, significant others, but you don't see me doing that shit, that's right? True. That's true. Uh, but uh, that's because I have restraint. So. <laughs> uh, I believe that is the definition of restraint. To the metal side, so. So, uh, uh, so besides Corey Taylor, I mean, because that's fine, but. Uh, Surge from System put out a new album Ooh. today. Well, it was an EP. EP. Is it so tri- we don't really talk about EPs. Is it a tribute to Donald Trump? <laughs> no, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, right? I might be. But it's basically just an EP of some jams he had ready for a potential new system album that I don't think will ever happen now. Is he going to start his own shit then? I mean, he that's, ha- that's, that's his third album. That's got to be the way to go, right? Just Yeah, because that's what everybody else has been doing. And honestly, he's been doing that too. No one gives a fuck about starting this band again outside of the bass player. Right. Bass player is actually really bummed out. They're not a thing anymore. System of Down was actually really, really good for their time, but I don't know, especially if they all hate each other now. Uh, I, I just think Serge probably hates John, the drummer. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, you know, I love that guy who needs my bandmate. I just fucking hate his political views. Well, yeah, but I think that's really important, especially if you're, <laughs> especially in our ramped up fucking thing now. I just love it now because all the anti-Trump guys are starting to realize what an asshole they elected in November. Well... You know, it that that's what happens. 
Hey, maybe we can look at the great picture, the, the, the big picture and go, hey, you know, uh, actually, all these people are assholes. All of them. If you yeah. want power, you're an asshole. I think Real Big Fish wrote a song about everyone else being an asshole. Yeah. And it's a factual jam. Real Big Fish are more about, uh, more about nonfiction in their ska than anything else. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, do you remember a band called uh, Thierfing? Yeah. They put out their first new song in like eight years because, today. Dude, it's been a long, long time. Because yeah, it's I been. Was, I was still listening. I was still listening to the Winter Sun's first fucking record when yeah. uh, last time that, uh, that Fear Thing put out their last 2012. Yeah. 2012 was the last time. Yeah. I think uh, you all, not you all, Nika, uh, the one, I always call it the one with Huto on it. <laughs> yeah, the, the really long, long finished title. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be offended. I'm, I'm actually showing respect by not even trying to butcher it. Uh, it was that's when that shit was new too, and it had been a long time. I listened to the song, which I'm not going to try to say the title because I will butcher it. Man, it sounds like 2012. It sounds really? like that. It, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a, I'm that makes me kind of happy, but also a little concerned because I, I recognize in folk metal that I mean, you, with the exception of Skyclad. And some of the really, really old cats that it's like, oh, that shit sounds really dated. Yeah. It probably should always sound very similar to whatever your base was. I can't imagine what a 2021 folk metal album sounds like. Well, this one, admittedly, uh, folk is not the main focus. It's uh, are they can are they just leaning more black metal? There's now? a well, they have a violin. Yeah, but it's it's not a synth. It's actual violin. And uh, not it's it, it's not really super folky. Hmm. It's kind of just a good kind of black pagan metal song. All right, Thierfing, uh So is that a full release or is that uh, just... no? Just the al- the album comes out in August. Okay, so it's just a single they put out for now. Yep, pretty straightforward for the band, but it it was nice to hear. And that that song itself, I think they wrote in 2015. They said so even. <laughs> I mean, it's an old song. They just right. finally put a little bit of gloss on it. Uh, John Schaffer, my boy. Oh, the man. The, the, the man uh, with the plan. The, the fellow that invaded the Capitol building. Uh, he's, uh, he's not getting out of jail. No. They'd, uh, they'd done that speedy, you know, like, oh, it's been 30 days, you ain't charging on him. You got it's been. <laughs> I didn't leave you the gap, motherfucker. <laughs> and, uh, but apparently they came over like, hey, you got to let him go now, right? You got to let him go. He hadn't been indicted on another right. And this fellow judge was like, no, nah, not only will he stay in jail, he no bond, no bail, no nothing for you. Nothing. No soup for you. Yeah. Next. And uh, I bet there's just a lot of people there. Like, I'm so glad I'm not in a band with that guy anymore. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Man, I. So I guess what of it? So if he goes to prison, they make an example out of him along with a bunch. Well, that means that dude's out of he's out of the scene. He's out of the scene for probably a decade. Uh, I would say he's out. Yeah. Even when he, if he comes back from this, it's not going to be in a musical fucking capacity. That guy better have a craft set up or a trade. Man. Because I don't think uh, whatever, if if he does get convicted of this, whatever jail time, because Fetty Crimes is yeah. jail times. You don't go on probation for a federal crime. No. <laughs> you got to go, son. Although the prisons are apparently a lot more cush. Yeah, but it still can't be better than fucking beating off your meat in the bathroom of your own home. Yeah. Well, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have shit in perspective. Are we ready for the UFC side of things? I'm ready the to celebrate MMA. Khabib's final fucking retirement, finally. Yeah, so we can I'm, finally let it go. So that way we can jump in on uh, Connor's uh, celebration. Yeah, what fucking does he have to celebrate? Uh, he he's just he's just the constant troller. I oh mean, well, but yeah, but the problem is he has no leg to stand on to troll anything Khabib related. The problem is this: is we should have been done with this shit five months ago. Dana White is the only reason why we're even still talking about this shit. Yeah, dude goes out, demolish, destroys Justin Gaethje, and. That's it. After the fight, it's like, yeah, that's it. I'm retired. He'd even said, yeah, well, my mother, before the fight and after, you know, because his dad died of COVID in July. Right. Or June or July. 
Well, and his mother had asked him to stop fighting. He's the only, like, male left in that family now. So he respected her wishes, as those folk do. That's and that fucking Dana, man right there. And Dana's like, nah, he ain't retired. I, I can unretire him, you goof. And it's just, yeah, so here we are five months later. It's like, oh, oh, so you're, you're not going to get this guy to fight? Well, okay. And then so Dana yesterday asked, they immediately set up a shitty fight for 155 that doesn't involve Tony Ferguson, does not involve Justin Gaethje, doesn't involve Conor McGregor, doesn't involve anybody you think probably should be fighting for the time. Doesn't involve Dustin Poirier. You know, but well, I but that I think that's okay. Here's why. I think that's okay because clearly Dustin Poirier is wanting to fight Conor again and get paid. Yeah. I'm good with that. I'm phony's been beat twice. That dude don't deserve a sniff at the title yet. That dude needs to come back and figure shit out. Yeah. Charles Oliveira beat him. Michael Chandler beat Dan Hooker. If Poirier and McGregor want to fight each other, there's no one left. So you get, uh, so what is that card then? We have uh, Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler. uh, Michael Chandler. So those two, I mean, it is what it is. The 155 division, I think, you know, usually whenever you have a champ, like, retire and vacate, it gets shitty. Look at light heavyweight. But nah. the thing is, though, is I 155, I think, is a solid division, though, where they're going to keep has a shot. We're going to keep they're going to it's going to keep providing and providing and providing that 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 tree will bear fruit. Yeah, dude, because there's always killers on the rise. Now, having said that, I still do appreciate 205 with Jan Blahovich at the top after he uh, destroyed fucking oh, yeah, Israel Adesanya. Dude. I appreciate that. Yeah, me too. Same. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it put Adesanya in check. Yeah, who's now saying it's like, well, uh, John Jones fight? That's still something. No, it's not. John Jones is now two hundred and forty pounds, but he wants to get more power, and that means he's going to need to put on more weight. I'm so I this that might be the most I uh, most invested I'm in in a weight class debut. Yeah, like Shevchenko bumping up one twenty five. I'm like, cool. That's her natural weight class. Right. No big deal there. John Jones bulking up and hitting prep, maybe not to the point where he needs to have a weight cut because he probably is doing this so he doesn't have to do that. I'd be willing to bet that dude probably is, you know, around the time that he gets on a card, I'm pretty sure he's probably going to be pushing 255. That, that's kind of the, the wheelhouse I was thinking. A comfortable 255, if that's all muscle, dude, that's a scary thought. Oh, that guy's jacked. It's it's scary thought. Starting to look really uh, real rumble. I saw that deadlift. He yeah, did. yeah. I was like, "Fuck!" Oh yeah. Oh no, god, that guy's dangerous. I, I I would not be stoked for that thought of that matchup. Of course, you have the chance to fucking beat John Jones for the first time ever. Yeah. I know it's a fight at heavyweight. I'll give a fuck. I don't know why everybody's getting really really excited for the Stipe Nagano fucking two. And I get it that Nagano's got a whole different approach to the fight game now. I get it, but God damn it, to, to just assume he's going to come in and throw an uppercut and finish Stipe is a little crazy. No, we saw how that worked for him in that first fight. Yeah. Great fight. That was a great fight. I think it went the distance. But, did it? I don't think. I, did it? I, I thought Stipe got the... Uh, I, I, would, I would check, but uh, Windows is being a cunt. Yeah, it's, it's, but, but the thing is... is that you to got, assume that is, is folly. You got a real smart fighter in Stipe. Yeah, look there's what a reason he learned that, after that fucking DC fight. There's a reason that guy holds the record for most wins at heavyweight as a champion. Yeah. I mean, that's, there's a reason for it. So if you think that he's going to stand right in front of him, like, I don't know, like Alistair Overeem, and get, get, it, get fucking put to sleep... <laughs> <laughs> Go off and visit the elves for a while. You know, it, it's not going to happen. Call that a fellowship phase. It's I I, I legitimately think that uh, I, I, I line that one up, line it up again. But I don't see how the result changes. The, and let's not forget, this is a promotion that the promotion, the head of the promotion, the president doesn't like Stipe. The fan base doesn't like Stipe. The fucking really? writers, uh, if you're in Ohio, they do. The uh, the writers don't like Steep, eh? The fucking uh, your uh, Ariel, what's that fucking Canadian dickweed's name? Uh, Ariel Hawani doesn't like him. So, I mean, when you get all these things, you're not going to get anything positive. It's going to be nothing but a drag on your name. Well, why? I don't get it. They think he's lackluster and very uh, uh, uninspiring. He finished Cormier. Yeah, but so does everybody, right? Well, I mean, him and John Jones got the job well, done. Well, that's everybody. 
<laughs> I don't know if you can say if John Jones can do it, anybody can. Now, those are the only ones that count. But, but I mean, but that's the whole thing. He's never gotten any realistic respect. He's a lot like Demetrius Johnson, just on the other end of the scale. Yeah, that's kind of a shame because, I mean, the guy, I think he beats Ngannou. Oh, I, I'm I'm almost. I, I think he takes that into deep water. That speed, uh, he's the, the speed advantage alone. Ngannou's got power, I'm sure. They're still think... shocked that Francis Ngannou because Stipe got dropped by DC, who isn't n- automatically known for his striking power. Well, but I also think he wasn't ready for that shot either. At heavyweight, anything can happen. I mean, let's right. be honest, anything can happen. Um, Best you can do is try to control it. And, and he did a fine job of controlling in, in, in that fucking fight. Does that mean he's not going to get caught? No, Nagano can catch anybody. Yeah. I'm just saying that that power comes at a cost, and that cost is speed. Right. Absolutely. That's why I'm curious about Johnny Boy. That is kind of the thing. Although I do think that with your run-of-the-mill heavyweights, I think John Jones is going to look really fast. Yeah, even that's true. Even bulking up. There's, there's not a whole lot of speed. In the heavyweight division no, right now, in the top five. Not really. It's all power and style. I would have to say that actually, well, with them cutting uh, Alistair, well, it's down. I think Stipe is like maybe the last semi-fast guy in that division. Yeah. And even he's not fast, man. I mean, quick, sure, maybe. But let's uh, let's get to the card this weekend. I'd love to. Can't pull it off. Oh, that's fun. You know but, what? But that's all right. I, I, got, uh, I got some things. Okay. I got some things about it. All right. The first one was a uh, uh, at the weigh-ins today because... After I got off work at the old salt mine selling marijuana to the populace, I'd uh, decide I like to watch weigh-ins. Call me weird, call me crazy. I like to watch weigh-ins. And I threw them on, and they were going normal. Uh, They saved Derek Brunson, I believe, and Kevin Holland for the last one. For obvious reasons, Kevin Holland's just so fucking entertaining. So this uh, female fighter gets onto the scale. Can't recall her name. I'd love to be able to pull it up. But again, technology being a bit of a whore. And she gets up there and automatically stumbles. Now, when I say stumble, I don't mean like she slipped and was like, oh, oh, my bad. It's like she stumbled but didn't realize she stumbled. And then she stumbled again. And then she fell off the scale and fucking passed out. That's not good, man. For like like split sec. Right. Because as soon as she her ass hit terra firma, she was back. Yeah, but people rush in. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> sure. And uh, you know, she's talking, she seems cognizant, knowing what's going on. And uh they help her up and attempt to weigh in again. Really? I, I know, right? I know, and and guess what? It gets better. God, that should have been a medical. Like, that should have been a medical. Like, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, after a moment of uh, collecting herself, they let her get back on the scale, and uh, they're just about to announce her weight, and she start her legs, her knees start going spaghetti. Jesus. And thankfully, there was someone there to put their arms under her armpits and help her come down. Because she, like, her bottom half of her body was done. Kind of like what they would do for uh, Cormier when he was active and uh, at the weigh-ins just to help him make that weight, right? And then she hopped back up and they let her weigh in a third time. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. no after, like, that, on, after that one, they shut it down. Yeah. Uh, well, outside of that, the the main thing is Kevin Hall and Derek Brunson tomorrow, dude. That's really all anybody cares Bro, about, right? That's all I care about. That is all. I mean, the whatever of the fight card would catch me. Good time. It always is. That's going to be a great fight. And it's free. Yeah. And Kevin Holland is a fucking madman. Derek Brunson is, I mean, man, I've learned a lesson on trying to pick fights, which I'm terrible at. Whatever I throw out there, you're always better served to go the opposite. But Derek Brunson, several times I've picked against that guy, and I always regret it every fucking time. Yeah. Well, and, and the, but the thing is, now he's fighting a guy. I feel like these two are just perfectly matched up. It's a fight between two stand-up specialists. 
And well, it's uh, two guys that can lay down damage, clearly. Yeah. Well, shit, Kevin Holland knocked a guy out on his back. Yeah. He did that. Granted, it was to Jacare, but still, that I couldn't knock out anybody from my back. Right. I just look like a little fat baby trying to grab a sweet out of your hand. You think Kevin Holland is the elite of the elite, or is he going to be a placeholder at the uh, top five? Tomorrow will tell the tale. I feel like this is like a 185 cowboy. Oh, wow. Fighting five times in 2020. Oh, winning them all except that there was one split decision that was pretty close against uh Derek oh not Derek Lewis. <laughs> no. Uh but it was uh Derek Smith I think something like that. But the other four he finished in spectacular fashion. The activity and the fact that he's like man I feel like I've been retired for 3 months. That's why I feel when I'm not fighting. Yeah. I I like that attitude. I miss that attitude in some of these fighters. Right? So with that going in, and Derek Brunson, that's the test. He goes in there and does what he did to everybody else to Derek Brunson. You're officially at the dinner table at that point. Yeah. Well, you know, with Adesanya suffering a loss, I don't know if Adesanya's faced the kind of game that Kevin Holland brings to the table. It's a similar kind of game, only he's not a counterpuncher. Similar movement. I won't, I won't say on par because Israel Israel fucking is a great tactician when he's moving around. Sure. Well, I'm just jumping on the bandwagon that you do whenever a champ that tries to go up a division and then loses, and then you immediately pile on and go, ah, what a piece of shit. I like how Kevin Holland's like, man, this guy's basically lost in every combat sport venture he's ever tried. So he's like a total loser. <laughs> well. <laughs> Why is he big mouth, man? Yeah. Like, you lose once, it's like, well, you're a fucking loser, guy. <laughs> you're clearly not the best that's ever lived. So who you got in that? Uh, for tomorrow? Yeah. Derek um, Brunson, uh, Kevin Hall, 185. I'll, at the risk of fucking doing what I always do, I'll pick against Derek Brunson. I, we'll see if I regret it or not. Most of the time, I do. I'll have to join you on that boat, man, and I think he gets it done early. Yeah. I, mean, I think Holland, probably, probably a first-round finish. He, Potentially, yeah. He has an awful lot of power. That that 185 middleweight should be the best division because it should be the biggest combination of speed and power. The perfect combination of speed and power. But the problem is it's not. I and think it's kind of it's been lately, well, until until in the last year and a half. It has been an underpowered 205 and an extra slow 170. Unless Yoel was fighting. Yeah, well, that guy's a different fucking beast, but different and especially now. I think it's going to be a good fight card tomorrow, but that main event, that's a primo main event. Very rarely you get a really well-matched-up main event like that. Yeah. That's pay-per-view style right there. It, it really is. And I'm actually a little bit shocked. Well, uh, I think it actually speaks volumes about the rest of the card, too, though, when they do that. When they give you a yeah. mwah for a main event, it's like, oh, this is on ESPN+. Plus, and you pull it up, it's like, who the fuck are all these people? <laughs> Gregor Gillespie's on the card. I know that. That should be entertaining. His name rings a bell for a reason. Did he do something? There was something infamous about him? Uh, he suffered a loss a while back that was pretty pretty gnarly. Okay. But then he's like been running him off ever since. Yeah. This is how we sound when we don't have Wikipedia to pull up. Yeah. It, no, it's it's <laughs> fine, man. Um, let's go ahead and get to them sweet picks. I mean, mm. I, know, I know we're going to come in under an hour this week. I'm going to go uh, Jim, Jim Dunlop, 42 millimeter. You know, Jim Dunlop. Uh, you're talking about guitar picks. Then. Oh, yeah. Oh, All right. oh. All right, good night, everybody. <laughs> uh, drinking the old uh, Budweiser. You know, I'm probably going to break out a little glass of that mead tonight. Oh, good man. Make sure that, uh, you know, the, the it works. That make it still sure works. it's all titties. Yeah, yeah. I want to make sure everything still works. I'm a QA guy everywhere I go. Uh, as far as the uh, what you're listening to, uh, which I got to say, uh, yesterday was Jerry Cantrell's birthday. We kind of spent an entire goddamn evening, me, you, and uh, Jack, Listening to fucking Alice in Chains, but notably Jerry Cantrell. Yeah, Al, everything Jerry Cantrell based. That was, that, was, good that was really fun. You know, that's but, how you celebrate a musician's birthday that you enjoy. Uh, I feel a little a little hangover of that. I might probably throw in some more uh, fucking probably Jerry Cantrell solo project stuff. Looking forward to that new one. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe fall this year. Um, September, you were thinking? I'm gonna call it September. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good month. I don't want to speak for the year, but the month of September might be good. All right. MMA. MMA. Oh, you didn't say what you're listening to, so. Oh, I'm fucking listening. 
You know what? You're listening to what the fuck I'm listening to, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what? We're going to go with that. <laughs> See, uh, MMA, who do you think would have beaten Khabib if he had actually had the chance to fight him? I think at the time. At the, now, it looks, I know you're it looks like folly now, but at the time, man, I just feel like the world got robbed of fucking Ferguson. Khabib. Oh, yeah. No, that's the greatest tragedy in I MMA. Mean, I, put, that, I put it right there with Jones Rumble. Yeah. Oh, that would have been so good. So good. They even Both. faced off at everything. I mean, it, it legitimately, there are fights that we're never going to see. And, and man, you could hey, Khabib could come out of retirement and then fucking throw Tony at him. But oh, it's no, never no, but, that, it's, but it's not gonna be the ain't same. It's gonna be the same. It's like GSP coming back. Right. It's gonna be cool. It ain't gonna be the same. Right. God, man. Yeah. Uh I I liked the best I liked Tony's chances was that fourth fight. The one where he blew his uh his knee out on the wire. Stepping on a stepping I, on a I, mic that, bundle. Yeah. That was when I'm like, this is the guy. This is the one that's gonna fucking kill Khabib. Yeah. At that time, yeah, that guy's kind of lost a step, as you do. See, that's the fucking danger. Guy's lost a little bit of a step. He lost a little bit of power. He lost lost a lot of shit that Justin Gaethje was able to walk through him with. Oh, fucking Dillashaw, Corey Sanhagen. That's what do you think? Ooh, I, that's a fight to make. Ooh, that's gonna be ooh. that's gonna be I, fight uh, of the year. I think. I think uh, I think Sanhagen is the right Dillashaw. Yeah, I think he's the right Dillashaw. He does, you know, I mean, right? No, I, T, I, I, TJ getting popped was a bad fucking thing for that guy and his image and the sport. I think Sandhagen comes in and fucking has that same fucking warrior spirit that TJ has always had, but he doesn't have that fucking cloud hanging over him. Do you think TJ will still have that cloud hanging over him in his, in his perspective? rest of his career? Rest of his career. Well, you think even he will yeah. feel affected by it? Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, well, I, that was he'll come straight back. up cheating. I think he'll come back, and I think he'll look good in a couple of fights, but I think he's also going to get fucking clobbered. I don't, I don't think it's ever a good thing to sit on your ass for two years. No, especially when you are you have to. That's right. It's harder to keep active that way. Yep. Well, let's go ahead and uh, move the fuck along then. Uh, sorry, I have nothing to throw your way for questions. But, it's all right. I'm opening yeah. the third beer. That means it's time to go. It is. All right. Uh, yeah, check it out, man. New fucking... Uh, the new Fear Thing is out, oddly. Weird thing to say, nine years since. God damn. I'm going to go out and build myself a golden sauna. Let's see. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. oh, well, and before I forget, uh, fuck Yari Menopon. Just fuck that guy. Five years running, fuck that piece of shit. Catch up with you assholes a couple weeks. Check out LJ's KBX. It's out. It's out. Loadout's back.